Hey, I'm back. I'm ready to do videos again. The pandemic kind of dampened my verve for video education, but I got fired up again today and I want to talk about hair loss. Is the pandemic making you lose your hair? Uh, yeah, I've, le I've been losing hair a little bit over the last few weeks and had been wondering about that, but it's something that's happened to me throughout my life, so I thought that I would explain what might be going on with you if this fits your situation. So the hair has a growing phase and the hair has a resting phase and the hair sits in the resting phase for two to four months and then the hair in the resting phase will shed and I guess it's pretty normal to lose about 80 hairs a day. It seems like a lot, especially when you're kind of collecting them in a shower or you know, swirling them up into little hair spiders, but um, 80 hairs a day is normal. But when you have a certain phenomenon called telogen effluvium, then you can lose more hair than that because more of the hair has gone into the resting phase and then two to four months later, you lose that hair. So this is what happens. You have a hormonal shift or you have a big stress or something like a car accident or you change um, your meds or go on and off the birth control pill. Many things can qualify as a kind of an inciting event, something that, that shocks your system to the point that the hormones just go zzz. And when the body is encountering that, then it does not put extra energy towards making hair. So what happens is more of the hair that's in the growing phase will go into the resting phase, and then two to four months later, it starts kind of shedding, It's and, and that's what you feel like you're doing. I'm a dog, I'm shedding, I'm like losing all my hair, will I have any hair left? <laughs> and the truth is, you will have hair left, and it will grow back normally if it is a telogen effluvium phenomenon. So sit, think back, go, what happened two to four months ago? Oh yeah, freaking huge pandemic that we're dealing with, uh, financial insecurity, lots of different things. So what I want to tell you is that there are certain things that you can do to make your hair regrowth much more successful. So we have been uh, eating kind of more um, inflammatory substances and drinking them too during the pandemic. And so the big four for inflammation are gonna be sugar, wheat, coffee, and alcohol, like all the things that have made this pandemic endurable. But now that we're realizing that this is a new normal, if you cut back on those things a little bit, then that can help your body make the hair growth more um, vigorous. The other thing is if you um, empower your thyroid, that gland that's right there, with some iodine-containing foods like uh, seafood or fish or seaweed, as long as you're not allergic, um, increasing the iodine containing foods in the diet can help the hair grow and then when I was talking to my hairdresser hi Danielle um, she also said make sure that when you get in the shower that you really stimulate your hair follicles because if the hair follicles get all gummed up with old um, kind of oil or or skin cells then um, the hair won't grow so the tendency when your hair is falling out is to like not touch it not wash it but but I agree with Danielle when she says that it's important to definitely continue to brush your hair and continue to um, try and stimulate those hair follicles so that when they're ready, that they can grow the hair that you need to feel like you're not totally going bald. Now, the other thing that a lot of people are on would be biotin, and biotin is a B vitamin, and so I would say um, biotin's good, but not just biotin. How about a multivitamin, or how about a B complex? Uh, to help with that. Vitamin C also decreases inflammation. And so here's some ideas for you to think about that will empower you to help grow your hair that seems to be shedding if that is the case. And if that's not, then go find another video for some wisdom. Okay, have a, um, have a productive new normal. Try and think forward about what you can do to empower your health as opposed to just kind of riding the roller coaster of disempowerment and frustration, which is going to get you nowhere. Okay.